Beef State or the Cornhusker State. Agriculture is the heart and soul of Nebraska. Celebrated this National Agriculture Week and every week. Straight ahead, we talk trade, how many billions the impact is as Nebraska farmers enjoy a record year but push for more. Plus, we head to Valley County where not so young farmers stay young by seeing what's new in agriculture. Later, the why behind FFA competitions and what teachers hope kids get out of it. It's time to grow. Nebraska farmers celebrate a record-breaking year for trade, but say more work needs to be done. Nebraska Farm Bureau has released its annual trade reports. It finds egg exports topped $9 billion in 2021, the most recent data available. Corn is the state's top export, and 90% of it goes to Mexico. But that country's decree on biotech crops threatens that market, something we asked Congressman Adrian Smith about. Uh, but what Mexico is, is doing with our corn, against our corn, is unacceptable, and we need to be very vigorous in our response. Smith says the record trade numbers reflect the efforts of President Trump, as he says President Biden has failed to build on that. Smith joined Farm Bureau for the release of the report. And it's easy to think about uh, just taking corn to the local elevator or taking uh, cattle to the uh, local sale barn. But beyond that, beyond that line of vision, um, there's big impacts happening. Economists say trade adds $7 per bushel of soybeans, $1.70 to corn, and $260 per head of beef. Nebraska is the number one beef exporter for the 10th year running. And the report shows the value of exports has tripled in the last 20 years. Nebraska's third district is tops in all of Congress when it comes to agriculture. And Congressman Adrian Smith makes it clear trade matters to central Nebraska. You know, we're, we're more of a manufacturing state than we probably give ourselves credit for. Congressman Adrian Smith says it's often overlooked. I'm inspired by Nebraska's involvement in the world. Nebraska products travel the world over, from our corn and beef to the tools we make to help others raise a crop. TNL Irrigation, they sell pivots worldwide. Tom Hastings saw that firsthand in his many years running the Hastings Chamber of Commerce. We have a lot of manufacturing in Nebraska, as well as agriculture. I mean, agriculture is our number one industry, but honestly, manu manufacturing is a big part of what goes on here in Nebraska. He listens closely as Smith lays out his vision for trade. Smith is chair of the Ways and Means Subcommittee on Trade and says it's one way to improve things around the globe. For, for folks concerned about environmental standards uh, that lack in other countries and in labor standards, trade agreements are the best way to address that and to level the playing field, realizing that other countries uh, have had more access to our markets than they've given us access to their markets, and we need, we need to correct that. Smith disagreed with President Trump's tariffs, but says he elevated trade and got a new trade deal accomplished with Mexico and Canada with bipartisan support. But he's concerned President Biden hasn't spoken up as Mexico appears to have violated that agreement by shutting out one of Nebraska's top exports, corn. Obviously, with uh, U.S. agriculture being a powerhouse and its efficiency, we need to make sure uh, we can sell our products around the world. Asked about Ukraine, Congressman Smith says Putin is wrong and no one wants Russia to win. He says the U.S. should keep all options open. A bipartisan effort led by Congressman Smith along with U.S. Senators Deb Fischer and Pete Ricketts attempts to deal with the E-15 situation. The Consumer and Fuel Retailer Choice Act would extend the Reed Vapor Pressure Volatility Waiver to ethanol blends above 10% to allow for year-round nationwide sales of E-15. The act would also ensure consistency and limit disruptions across the national fuel supply chain by prohibiting the removal of the one PSI waiver for E10 ethanol. All three lawmakers point out the year-round sale of E15 would be a benefit to the U.S. as it would help boost America's energy independence and provide more affordable fuel options. Nebraska's lawmakers are joined by senators and representatives from five of the six states surrounding Nebraska, as well as Minnesota, North Dakota, Illinois, and Ohio.
When it comes to the beef you eat, is it made in America? Cattle producers have long argued over what it means to be made in the USA. Now the USDA has proposed a new voluntary rule to make that clear. The Department of Agriculture says only meat from animals born, raised, slaughtered and processed in the United States could use the voluntary product of USA label. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack says this would prevent consumer confusion. The United States Cattlemen's Association says it's overdue. But the biggest industry group, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, takes a more nuanced view. And CBA says there's no question the current definition doesn't work, but worries this replaces one flawed government label with another. And a third cattle group, RCAF USA, takes yet another view, saying it supports this reform, but says Congress should be the one making the change. The USDA is taking public comment for 60 days before the rule takes effect. They're older than the average age of the American farmer, but this group of young farmers stays young at heart. Farmer Dave Setlick runs with a young crowd. Most of us are pretty close in age. Some of, some of the fellers are younger. Not these high school kids. He's a member of the Ord Young Farmers Group. These guys who've been together since the Carter administration. Not long after I graduated in 77, probably about 81. They haven't been at school for a half century. But you guys, you eat. But high school teacher Dave Ferentz is their guide. Actually, we should be called the seasoned young farmers and ranchers because some of us, I'm just about the youngest one. Dave Setlick says other Nebraska chapters faded away, but they're still going strong in Valley County. These hold 30 to 40. You can... Where they're seeing how diverse agriculture is. We've toured all kinds of facilities and uh, learned, and sometimes the best ones are right in your back door. A half a mile or three quarters of a mile away, but you never get to see the inside. You would go by them every day, but you didn't realize uh, what they were. And these guys are so willing and sharing. Guys like Tom Thompson, one of Dave Ferentz's former students who partnered with his brothers 20 years ago to start a feedlot that's now a series of lots and tens of thousands of cattle using technology and a team of experts. We try to keep uh, anything new, at least explore it, and uh, we do a lot of uh, you know, studies or data and, and try to track everything we do and, and make decisions based on that. Thompson likes to help ranchers see the beef industry from pasture to plates. There's always been that disconnect, like I said, between the cow-calf all the way to the consumer and, and, and in between, and it's, it's good to do this kind of stuff to bring together and people share ideas, see what they're doing. Livestock producers can have their cattle and hogs processed locally. A day of tours is a highlight for the Young Farmers Group that welcomed actual young farmers. These FFA members recite a creed expressing their belief in the future of agriculture, words Dave Setlick still aspires to. But even at our age, we still need to learn something. The USDA has released its latest world agricultural supply and demand estimates. The season average for corn prices is down 10 cents to $6.60 per bushel. This is the result of a corn surplus in the U.S., which is sending prices down. No word on the impact this will have on ethanol production or pricing. A broken bow man has died after being trapped in a grain bin. According to the Custer County Sheriff, deputies responded to a report of a man trapped in a grain bin west of Myrna. Personnel from a number of area departments, along with other individuals, were eventually able to free the man identified as 52-year-old Christopher Ogle, who later died from his injuries at the hospital. The sheriff said he and other individuals were removing corn from the grain bin when the incident happened. A Nebraska grain handling company is facing hundreds of thousands of dollars in penalties after being found at fault for the death of one of its workers. According to a news release, the OSHA area director is investigating a September incident at Agri Services Center in Roseland, where a 34-year-old worker was attempting to clean out a silo ahead of fall harvest when he became engulfed in corn and died. OSHA found multiple safety violations. They found the worker was not equipped with an adequate body harness and Lifeline could have rescued him with. In total, OSHA issued 16 citations and proposed over a half million dollars in penalties. Later, we see how many Nebraska schools have embraced egg education to prepare kids for high wage, high skill, high demand jobs. Up next though, more on quality assurance training for youth. This portion of NTV's Grow is sponsored by Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Acres has what you need to get the job done. 
youth, or the quality care of animals. And TV Sarah Kirkley has this interview with Nebraska Extension. Kids learning the ins and outs of taking care of livestock, even at a young age. You may not be surprised, we're talking about 4-H. Rhonda from Nebraska Extension joins us now to talk about some of the important programs coming up. Thanks for speaking with us. What are some things happening right now when it comes to livestock? Yeah, so we, most counties right now are, are doing YQCA trainings. And so we, although we know 4-H is more than just agriculture, we do have some important educational programs happening. And YQCA training is one of those that are happening all across the state. And YQCA stands for Youth for the Quality Care of Animals. And that this is a training that every young person that shows livestock in 4-H or FFA must be certified in. And the, the goals of YQCA, IQCA is the safety and well-being of our animals, ensure a safe food supply to our consumers, as well as developing life skills. And this, this training is really important for youth so that they can learn how to properly care for their animals, ensuring they are well cared for and they're, they're fed properly. It's also important that youth as a, uh, understand that they're a livestock producer and they help to ensure that the food that they are producing is safe for the consumers that purchase our product. And so Youth not only learn that, but they also learn those life skills when they participate in 4-H livestock projects. So learning responsibility, environmental stewardship, communication, all of those things are important. And it's important that our young people learn about ag advocacy and telling their story. And so we have a lot of misconceptions out there about agriculture. And the more that we can teach our young people, um, the better it's going to be. And so how do we complete YQCA? There's several different options. Many counties hold face-to-face -face meetings where they can complete the YQCA program or it can be done on online as well. And so you just need to contact your local extension office as to how they're doing it in your county. And there's another great livestock opportunity towards the end of May, right? There is. We have our Animal Science Discover Day, which is held at uh, Nebraska College of Technical Agriculture in Curtis on May 25th. And Youth learn about the livestock industry and animal science careers. And the cost is $15. Topics include genetics, byproducts, poultry, dairy, beef, swine, advocacy, and careers. And so to find out more about that, you can also contact your local extension office. Great resource. Thanks so much, Rhonda. Thank you. Our Grow Weather Outlook is next. NTV's Grow Weather is sponsored by Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Acres has what you need to get the job done. The drought monitor is improved in some areas at least this week, but not the worst part of the drought. As far as no drought in Kansas, it's up to 15.8%. 84 and a tenth percent of Kansas abnormally dry, moderate drought, 74 and a half percent, and 65 and a tenth percent severe. Extreme drought, on the other hand, no change there. 52 and a third percent exceptional drought in Kansas, 36 and a quarter percent wise. Well, in Nebraska, there's just this really tiny sliver in the southeast part of the state. It amounts to about a third of 1% drought free, 99.5% abnormally dry. The state of Nebraska, 98.5% moderate, and 78.5% severe in the extreme category. 34% exceptional drought remains at five and a tenth percent up in the southeast portion of the state. So the moisture we've seen, for instance, that fast moving cold front that blew snow more than anything in eastern and northern Nebraska didn't put a dent in the drought this past week. As far as temperatures are concerned, below normal. We are averaging that right now through all of Nebraska, the northern third of Kansas, normal temperature-wise, the southern two-thirds of Kansas, and then precip, normal precip for most of Nebraska and Kansas, 
except above normal, the eastern part of Kansas, the panhandle northern into northeast Nebraska will see above normal precipitation wise. As far as the three month for March, April, May, temperatures will be on the normal side for Nebraska and Kansas, except below normal or above normal, I should say, the extreme southwest corner of Kansas. And then for precipitation, something I always say I like to see because I do, and that is normal precipitation for Nebraska and Kansas for that three month outlook. So that is good news, especially as planning season is just around the corner. And so is spring. Tomorrow spring will have sprung with a slight chance of spring showers to bring May flowers. Better chances Tuesday, Wednesday as we warm all the way up to 66. A bit of a cool down on Thursday, Friday, back into the 50s, but still right on track for normal for this time of year. Normal highs should be 53, normal lows 29. The entire week we will average above in both categories. 57 will be our average high, 34 our average low. And a, a pretty good size proverb. So many myths in March we see, so many frosts in May shall be. So many fogs in August we see, so many snows that year will be. That is your GROW report for this week. Join us again next time as we watch things grow. want to fill the airwaves with photos from the farm and ranch during National Agriculture Week. Go to our website, Nebraska.tv. Look for the Agriculture tab when you chime in. A record number of Nebraska schools have embraced egg education to prepare kids for real world careers. Find out more coming up. Ag Youth of the Month is sponsored by Landmark Implement. Experience the landmark difference with locations across Nebraska and Northern Kansas. Schools embrace agriculture in the classroom to prepare kids for high demand jobs. Kids huddle over blueprints with calculators in hand. Four inches is one ninth of a yard. <laughs> Career development events put kids to the test. The students learn in the classroom and then they get the opportunity to see what they've learned in the competition. Farming and ranching are just two of the hundreds of careers FFA can prepare kids for. And contests are a way to see what students can do with the skills they've gained. And ag mechanics, can they wire that switch? Can they, uh, what parts of the engine do they remember? Other events focus on communication skills. And I think it's great because you're just able to develop public speaking skills you're able to use and help you use the rest of your life. This year I've excelled in that and that's just been really great because it's boosted my confidence. The state has identified what it calls H3 jobs. High wage, high skill, high demand. Many of them are in egg-related areas, and not all require costly student loans to achieve. Do support the four-year degree, but we also have a lot of emphasis on the two-year degree, which is very much in demand, the H3 careers. Teachers say there's room to personalize, whether it's welding or entrepreneurship. Sandy Creek, for example, keeps cattle on school grounds. And get them ready to go to the butcher, and we use that meat for in our school. Contests can also bring out the competitive spirits while also expanding students' view of careers. I want to go into the field of veterinary medicine, so this is a good opportunity to kind of look at how all sorts of different farm animals function. The biggest thing I've learned ag-wise and FFA associated would definitely be the relationships um, that I've built and had uh, will carry on through uh, a long time. Win or lose, teachers say kids are gaining valuable experience. It was 10 years ago this month, Grow went on the air, and I have to say, 
hanging out with those kids is always a highlight. That's going to do for the program this week. Make sure to stay with NTV all week long for more coverage of National Agriculture Week as we see how agriculture makes Nebraska grow. NTV's Grow is brought to you by Aurora Cooperative. Tougher together, Aurora and you.